So the NBA season is very, very close. And that means that our season preview uh, is continuing. Today, we are going to look at the players who will decide the NBA this season. And th this is different from the players who, like the best players in the league and all of that. These are the guys who, if they come out and really do what they do or do what they're supposed to do or whatever it is, then that is going to shift potential like championships, conferences, whatever, that they are going to have an impact. And if it if they don't do what they're supposed to do or something happens, then it shifts the dynamic in a complete other way way. So, uh, coming in at number five, I'm cheating, but it's two guys on one team. It is Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier. The Miami Heat have not really done a whole lot since Heat culture reigned supreme a couple of years ago, and now you have Pat Riley talking about Jimmy Butler contracts, and it just feels like the end of an era could be coming soon for the Miami Heat. I, uh, maybe that's a, a bit overstating things, but I think there is a lot of pressure on Jimmy Butler this year, and thus, Terry Rozier as well. You, you had Rozier, Butler, and Adebayo, and they never really got going together, and injuries kind of kept that, uh, kept that group apart for a bit. But I do think now, when you go into this season, if that is still the case, and there is ineffectiveness, injuries, and all of those things, then Miami probably just kind of fades off into that night. And then that leads to a couple of things. One, I think Jimmy Butler gets traded. Two, Rozier gets traded? Uh, I, I don't think he would get moved necessarily, but I do think that there, it would be a change in philosophy in Miami a little bit. I don't think that they, they, they don't do the teardown thing. They just, they never have and probably won't. But what they... They, they might do a retool or something, but I do think it would lead to a pretty big shift for them and then lead to a good player being out on the market. And if those guys do click, they are a team that no one is talking about right now in the Eastern Conference. And so that would put some pressure on those top tier teams. So that's why I think those two guys are going to be really important in deciding how this year goes. At four, it's Chris Middleton. The Milwaukee Bucks are the forgotten team, I think, in the NBA. And the, yeah, your time has, your, your time, you, you had your time, it has now come and gone, on to the next thing. And everyone's kind of forgetting that this is a, has the potential to be a very good basketball team with Lillard, Giannis, sorry, and Middleton. And if Middleton can get back to what we have seen him do in the past, then this Milwaukee Bucks team, I think, still has a championship level ceiling. It might be one that they can just kind of only graze right now, but it, it is one where if they do have everyone healthy and playing the way that they can, they can still get to that level. But Middleton, I think, is the absolute key for that. And so if Middleton is going, again, Milwaukee can be a championship contender, and that puts more pressure on the Bostons and the Philadelphias and the New Yorks in the Eastern Conference. If Middleton isn't right, then I, I think that this becomes a much less dynamic offensive team, and they kind of just, again fade away, like we talked about with Milwaukee, uh, or sorry, with, with Miami, and they, they do kind of become the afterthought that everyone thought they were going to be. At three, Zion Williamson. We got so many, we, we've been getting little tastes of Zion in different play-ins and stuff like that, but we saw last year that he can go on a run and be that MVP caliber player that we all thought he could be, and we thought injuries maybe denied us of that, but there is still that guy in there. It is asking a lot, but if that guy's in there for 82 games, then this Pelicans team, again, I think could be a championship contender. This is, There's a lot of ifs that go along with that, no question, but I, I think that if Zion Williamson is healthy and can for 82 games, just one, just one 82 game stretch is all we need from this guy. Honestly, probably 65 games, or maybe even 60. Can we just keep this guy healthy so that they can get into the playoffs? But again, this is a team that I don't think a whole lot of people in the West are, or a whole lot of people just in general, are really factoring into the West discussion. It is the Minnesotas and the Denvers, and uh, even Memphis, I think, is getting a little bit more buzz than this team is right now. And so, 
th there's a weird Ingram thing going on there totally, and we'll talk about him a little bit later on in this episode, but for, for Zion, if he can get to that level, then again, a new contender comes into the ring in the championship discussion in the Western Conference. At two, Jamal Murray. It was a disaster of an Olympics for him, and it's not been great in Denver since they won the championship, and I get that was only a couple of years ago, um, but like they... I, I guess I, I said it hasn't been great in Denver since then. Like they, they were a very good team and on the cusp of being the number one seed in the West last year. So I'm I'm overstating that a little bit. But for Murray, they have someone who I think really needs to get going because if he is not, they just don't have the horses anymore. And it, it kind of all came together in that championship run where he was going and you had depth and a bench that can help push you, and then Jokic is obviously the best player in the world, but now you have taken some significant hits to your depth, and you are now relying on a lot of pieces that are just unproven. You cannot have this guy not be at a all-star level. If he is at that level, then again, the Nuggets can win a title. If he is not, it is going to be really hard for this team to get back to that championship point. And so, for the other ones that we talked about in this list so far, it's a, yeah, you know what, you can squint and see that, man, they, they could really make a push for something. With Denver, we obviously have a proof of concept a couple of years ago, and they have the best player in the world. If he can just be, if Murray can just be himself, then this is a championship caliber team again. But if he is not, then I just don't think they can compete with the Oklahoma cities and the, the, the all the teams we mentioned before, right? So he is, I think, so important to deciding how this season goes for Denver and for the rest of the NBA. And at one, it is Isaiah Hartenstein. He comes to a Oklahoma City Thunder team that feels like they were a Isaiah Hartenstein away from being a championship team a year ago. And it, it certainly seems like he just fits there in Oklahoma City. And if it is the perfect match that everyone thinks it is going to be, then yes, this is, I think, the clear favorites in the West and would give a real scare to the Celtics or the Knicks or the 76ers or whoever in the NBA championship, in the NBA finals. If he is not, if if for whatever reason, it's just an oil water thing or whatever it is, if he's not, then I think the door in the West is wide open, given, again, what we talked about with Denver, what we talked about with the Pelicans, what we have talked about in the past about the Minnesota Timberwolves. And so I, I just think, Obviously, that this is a superstar-driven league. We we all have that understanding. But the, the superstar play on the Thunder wasn't an issue last year. It was just getting those rebounds and getting those stops, at, at, or some of those stops, I guess, at key moments and being able to rely on a big man to do some of those things. They need him now. If, if he can be that guy, then this can be that team. If he can't, then it feels like it's going to be just another one. Um, j j just another, another good team in the West. So those are the players who I think will decide this upcoming season.